the genesis of Kullar uh, economy, I think, started off with the idea when Ajay comes to talk about how we are actually living a, a very different kind of a life than what is really available in the real economic systems that India is following. Uh, this gelled with me primarily because if you look at the empirics, around 15% of the Indian economic system is what is structured, i.e. taught through business schools, uh, employ these kind of managers. And about 50% of the Indian economic system is what is we don't know much about. It's also called, like Professor Vaidyanathan puts it, India Anink. Uh, there is some empirical evidence available for all of this. The course was primarily an attempt to start shining a light on the dominant part of the Indian economic system, which has continued for a very long period of time. Gullar economy, for me, as a business student, I think is more about perspective, cognition and execution, all three. The perspective part comes in when you actually think about the majority of Indian businesses and the Indian economy actually being disconnected with the masses. It's not incorporated and it's mostly informal, as the term is used. Cognition of the fact that the traditional Indian business knowledge and business models are the way to go for one of the largest untapped markets in the world rather than Western corporate philosophies being applied. And finally, execution, because I think the knowledge, the traditional grassroots business opportunities available in India need to be looked at and finally acted upon uh, to bring out the maximum uh, potential and value at the end of the day. So in designing a course like this which wants to shine the light on over 50% of the Indian economic system, the business system, it is a pedagogical problem. We don't have case studies, we don't have textbooks, we don't have those kind of structures on the material. So what we are experimenting with here is immersion. How do students or participants experience parts of this economic activity and very essentially create content which then needs to be curated for further communication and dissemination uh, across the wider world. And one of the things that over the past a uh, couple of years that we've been discussing, especially with uh, uh, Professor Ashutosh Khanna, with uh, Dr. Chatterjee and the rest of the team at IMI, uh, and a couple of other institutes that I've uh, been speaking with, is that we need to come up with a sustainable solution to address this specific problem. And uh, the source of this for us is, how do we make India a producer's economy and not just treat it as a consumer's market? So with that in mind, uh, we, uh, you know, I had been brainstorming and uh, uh, came up with a course which is more uh, localized in nature but global in outlook. Uh, it, it starts addressing the problems by actually looking at the problems locally uh, and, and really getting the students to immerse in uh, what the, the economy looks like from on the ground rather than just giving them a bookish overview. Um, I mean, back in business school, I uh, did case studies around BMW and Mercedes and you know, all kinds of uh, international manufacturers, but we have not been able to address the problems at Hindustan Motors. And I think that's one of the key that we need to start looking at. Recently, we have been doing a lot of research into uh, Damascus steel, a form of wood steel art uh, that originated in Karnataka, India, got its name, the famous name Damascus steel, through its export of swords, the famed Damascus steel swords to Syria and now has come back with a few artisan families left in Udaipur. We are looking into productizing this with a royal touch and feel uh, for everyday consumers and so far our research has proven uh, that it is entirely possible and it is another aspect of how uh, traditional Indian uh, knowledge can be productized and brought up into successful business models. Kullar economy for me is about realizing that true potential does not lie only in the cities but in the most remote corners of India as well. Uh, so in our second uh, class we actually visited one of the Vedic villages and we had an interaction with uh, the person who was in charge of the school and he mentioned about the one thing about the villages being the unit for the entire nation. 
so it's like when you make use of this uh, entire network of villages which is the core of our country and try to develop a plan which uh, which works on these uh, works on these uh, network and try to improve this network improve these villages and then thereby helping this economy so if so actually kullar economy is a mindset of finding value even in the smallest of things see entrep- entrepreneurial ventures are all about finding value so kullar economy has brought in me a mindset in which i can see value even in the smallest of things and hence make profitability out of it my aim is to productize and market this red garlic which is which is abundantly grown in the villages of gujarat and is used extensively as an ingredient for gourmet cooking in european dishes uh, kullar economy has not been like any other subject that we are studying in this uh, curriculum kullar economy to uh, me personally would be more of a realization other than any academic learning the kind of uh, projects that we have done the kind of people that we have met Uh, it has uh, more uh, uh, it has uh, brought me more towards the uh, basic economy that the indian uh, people uh, held long back in the ancient times and then how can we bring uh, the kind of economy back to the current present times and uh, uh, gain from it that's kullar economy is solving our economic problems using our traditional business models and business practices that have been used in the past and modifying them to suit our present economy we also want to be able to introduce some of these concepts to some of the corporates from international business houses coming into india who want to know how to do business in india so there are multiple products possible on this and there's a need for us to understand it. so this course is essentially an attempt at the ambitious level to start changing the narrative or be part of the story of the changing narrative of india to be a production economy and innovative economy and uh, secondly is to start understanding patterns of behavior patterns and norms of business the relationship based economies the debt based structures that have always informed us and how hence they produce and trade goods and have been in india for a long period of time So that's the attempt we have. Let's see. It's a journey we started, inspired by books by Professor Vedanathan Karanchabapati, who told us about this part of the economy. But we need to investigate it further, and hopefully, we'll evolve more products, uh, educational products, to be able to deliver and you know, and collaborate more extensively. Thank you. economy for me has really contributed to god's experiential learning and for me kullar economy is basically understanding and exploring the potential of indian unincorporated the center for disruptive innovation and enterprise is an idea whose time has come it collaborates with an institution of excellence in india called iit kanpur and the kautilya fellowship network to produce something which india desperately needs it's an idea whose time has come now ideas don't run the world people run the world ideas are maps that point people in a certain direction the innovation that you see here come from the grassroots and then they evolve they well up organically and they inform the consumption patterns the mindsets the methods of buying and selling and this cannot be ignored anymore because the entire shift of business uh, is happening already happened from the atlantic to the pacific from exclusive economies that believes in value for money rather than value for many as well as value for money but these paradigms are going to emerge from the soil of india and they're going to emerge from the business school contexts such as imi delhi and our two other campuses where we are going to inform the students that there is another world out there which is much bigger much more impactful in a very subtle and very gentle way actually essentially informs us that it is possible to do more with less but how do we bring about this whole revolution in our thinking how do we bring about a certain you know uh, belief that those who sustain the economy 80% of indian economy by doing business the way they do as a relevance on the world stage and i think this institution believes in you know showcasing 
giving voice to the voiceless, articulating the inarticulate, making the silent India more eloquent for the world. This is how we are going to bring forth uh, a body of knowledge, a body of students who will go out there and challenge the dominant constructs of doing business and probably establish a new way of redefining the world.